Well, it's that time again when Sanctuary Lakeside Church comes into your living room. It is Wednesday evening, uh, the 1st of March, 19, uh, 2023, and uh, we are uh, uh, having a, uh, something a little different tonight. I guess I'm starting to sound like a broken record. We've been doing that quite a bit lately, but one of the things that this uh, format of a devotional service does for us is it, it gives us a lot of flexibility on what we provide on, a, on an evening of uh, reflection. And, uh, for example, we had our, uh, our six-session uh, sermon series on C.S. Lewis and what he had to say about faith and uh, about God and about Scripture and a lot of other things. Um, so uh, this week, we're going to actually take a look at the Bible uh, itself and uh, uh, look at some interesting things or things that I hope anyway that you find interesting about it. And uh, uh, then we'll move on uh, and uh, give you some interesting facts about, uh, about that book that... Uh, we call the Bible that we rely on so heavily in our faith. So I uh, hope you enjoy the evening. Uh, we do this for you. And uh, uh, we, of course, keep it recorded on our page here so that if you can't tune in on Wednesday evening, you can tune in whenever you are able, uh, any time of the day or night. So this will remain on the site for uh uh, as long as uh, we have a site, so as a page, so so anyway, we're going to move right on into our uh, uh, service. Again, welcome, and here's our first song, and then we'll be back for our prayer.
know you are near. We're uh, back. Hope you enjoyed that music. We try and and uh, get a nice balance of uh, old uh, favorite hymns and uh, newer praise music, although some of the newer praise music is actually uh, 20, 25 years old. But uh, uh, anyway, we want to give you a nice uh, variety of music, uh, and we hope you enjoyed that. Um, this evening, we're going back to the Lion's Book of Famous Prayers, uh, and... Uh, we're going to take a look at St. Fran uh, Francis of Assisi's uh, Canticle of the Sun. I'm going to tell you a little bit about St. Francis. Uh, he's uh, uh, the, the book here says that he is the one saint everyone agrees in canonizing. Uh, the, uh, that was one biographer's description of Francis. He was the son of a wealthy cloth merchant. Um, he was taken prisoner in uh, a war between Assisi and Perugia, um, and he became seriously ill. And after a pilgrimage to Rome, he returned to Assisi and was praying in the ruined church of San Damiano when he heard a voice saying, Go and repair my house. Taking this literally, he sold some of his father's cloth and offered the money to the priest to rebuild the church. That uh, actually caused some conflict within his family, uh, and it came to a head uh, when Francis stripped off all his clothes in the marketplace and returned them to his father. And from now on, he regarded himself as married to Lady Poverty. With clothes he was given by the bishop and money that he had begged, Francis went off to rebuild San Damiano, and he was soon joined by seven disciples, the first of what was to become the vast order of Franciscan friars. They lived in extreme poverty, preaching, laboring, and serving the needy. So that's a little bit about St. Francis. Uh, and uh, he died uh, at the age of 45, uh, worn out by poverty, according to the Lion's Book of Prayers, copyright 1984. So will you bow with me in prayer? The Canticle of the Sun. O Most High, Almighty, Good Lord God, to you belong praise, glory, honor, and all blessing. Praise be my Lord God for all his creatures, especially for our brother the Son, who brings us the day and who brings us the light. Fair is he and shines with great splendor. O Lord, he signifies you to us. Praise be my Lord for our sister the moon and for the stars which she has set clear and lovely in heaven. Praise be my Lord our brother the wind for and for the air and clouds, calms and all weather by which you uphold life in all creatures. Praise be my Lord for our sister water who is very serviceable to us and humble and precious and clean. Praise be my Lord for our brother fire, through whom you give us light in the darkness, and he is bright and pleasant and very mighty and strong. Praise be my Lord for our mother the earth, who sustains us and keeps us and brings forth various fruits and flowers of many colors and grass. Praise be my Lord for all those who pardon one another for his love's sake, 
and for who endure weakness and tribulation. Blessed are they who shall peaceably endure for you, O Most High, will give them a crown. Praise be, my Lord, for our sister, the death of the body, from which no man escapes. Woe to him who dies in mortal sin. Blessed are they who are found walking by your most holy will, for the second death shall have no power to do them harm. Praise and bless the Lord, and give thanks to him, and serve him with great humility. As we conclude our prayer with the words our Savior taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're uh, now going to turn to our prayer, or, or I'm sorry, our scripture for the day, and then we'll move on to our message. So stay tuned. For our scripture this evening, we're going to look at both the Old and the New Testaments. Uh, our first scripture reading is from Joshua uh, chapter 1. Verse 8, and these uh, scriptures go along with our subject of the evening, which is the Bible. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Then moving to the New Testament, the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4. Matthew 4, verse 4. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. These are the very words of God for the people of God, and your response is, thanks be to God. We're going to move on into our message, which today concerns the Bible. I forgot to mention we're broadcasting from inside today, not because of uh, any uh, bad weather outside, but it is very windy out there, and uh, whenever it's windy, we struggle with our sound. So we're broadcasting from inside because of the sound. Um, I might be able to lift this up and give you a look out here. Uh, Goldie is up behind my head here. She decided she's going to be our producer today. But uh, if you can see over my shoulder out there, um, it's pretty bright. But uh, that it is a beautiful sunny day here, 80 degrees currently in our uh, and now maybe you'll have a little better idea of why this is our winter headquarters for sanctuary lakeside church so on to the message well as i mentioned uh, during our introduction today we've been hitting some pretty heavy subjects over the past uh, month or two on our Wednesday evening devotion. So today, uh, during this second week of Lent, we're going to take a break away from that uh, line of, uh, of uh, reflection and have a little fun with a book that we call the Bible. Some people believe that the Bible is written by people who witnessed what was going on at that time, and then wrote it down. That's true for a lot of the New Testament and some of the Old Testament, 
but for a lot of particularly the Old Testament, uh, sometimes called the First Testament um, or the Hebrew Bible, uh, much of it, especially in the earliest parts, was actually oral history. It was set uh, a set of stories passed down through an oral tradition for hundreds and in some cases thousands of years. They were stories told around campfires and in shelters, um, primitive shelters, uh, and learned by young people so that they could then pass those stories on to their children and their children's children. Genesis is a really good example of one of these books, the first book of the Bible. Obviously, no one except God, uh, some of us believe, uh, who some of us believe is the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But they, that was the only one around when the universe was created. Scientists refer to it as the Big Bang. We call it the creation story. Some people don't think that the scientific version and the Christian version are compatible. I happen to disagree adamantly. I think they are very much compatible, but that's another message for another time. Anyway, <clears throat> gradually, as human beings came into the picture and languages began to develop, people began to pass their history along to their descendants so that it would not be lost to future generations. Eventually, a means of writing developed, and a group of people began to write that history down so that it could be preserved more than in just in the minds of the people who were passing it along. Many biblical scholars believe that the majority of the texts in the Bible were written down somewhere between 350 before the Common Era. We used to call it before Christ or B.C. But anyway, between 350 B.C.E. and 150 Common Era or after the birth of Christ, a period of about 500 years total. That isn't that long when you consider how many millions of years the Bible encompasses. The Bible was originally written in three languages. Most of the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. That was the language that the first readers spoke and read. Ezra and Daniel in the Old Testament were written in Aramaic, and the New Testament uh, was written in Greek, since that was the most commonly spoken language of that period of time. According to the uh, over, uh, uh, overview uh, Bible.com, it was written uh, on three continents. Most of it was written in Israel, which would be the continent of Asia. Some of the passages were written in Egypt, which is considered part of Africa, and several uh, of the letters or epistles in the New Testament were actually written uh, in what is now Europe. We need to remember that the Bible, unlike many of the books that we read, wasn't written by one author at one time, but rather by many authors over many hundreds of years, thousands if you count the oral history um, traditions that were mentioned. Moses is often credited for the first five books of the Bible, although we don't know that for sure, and it is quite possible that those books were written by any number of religious leaders over a period of centuries that are covered in those books. For example, uh, this is how that worked. Jesus, uh, let's take Jesus for as an example. He had disciples, like the original 12 that he chose. <clears throat> Each of those disciples um, once they were sent out on their own, less Judas, of course, 
would eventually have their own disciples. Those disciples learned from their mentor, so they began to think like their mentor. They began to believe like their mentor, and they began to mirror their mentor's belief system. So some sections of some of the works in the New Testament attributed, let's say, to Paul, for example, could have been written by some of Paul's disciples. Um, there are, are some of those sections that we can tell from the style uh, that, that it was uh, and from some of the language used and some of the terminology and the, the culture in which it was written. Um, we can tell that it's written in a Pauline style, but we don't necessarily know 100% that Paul actually penned the words himself, whether he instructed one of his apostles to pen the words, uh, or whether the, the apostle just decided on their own to do that. <clears throat> if you counted the credited writers in the Bible, you would find somewhere around 40. But in reality, we know there are many, many more than that. Um, just the immense period of time covered by the Bible and some common sense would tell us that. Regardless, we know that God inspired the words of the Bible. So whoever the writer was, God was actually the inspiration behind the words. We could say that the Holy Spirit actually passed those words along to those who wrote them down. If you remember from our C.S. Lewis sermon series, we said that the Bible itself is not a book, but rather a collection of books written by many authors. The more majority of those books are standalone books under the collection or the heading of the Bible. A few of the Old Testament books, like 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, or 1 Kings and 2 Kings, were originally written as one book. They weren't divided because of their content or uh, the, the way they were written or what was included in them. Uh, it was a much more practical reason than that. They were divided because leaving them together would have made the scroll on which they were originally written too heavy to hold up and read. And those books are not all the same either. Some of them are written by people who could foresee the future. Not all the books of the Bible, I mean, are not the same. Uh, they're not written the same. They aren't written for the same purpose. And uh, But they are written um, by, some of them are written by people who could foresee the future because God sent them to tell people what was to come. Those folks were called prophets. Some of them were called major prophets. Some were called minor prophets. The prophets, prophets often discuss what's going to happen in Israel. That was a common thread. They also call out the wrongdoing of Israel's citizens. We can learn from these ancient texts and learn more about what God wants from us. Different churches have designated who they believe are considered major and who are not, but Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel are on most all of those lists. Lamentations is also included by some, as it is associated with Jeremiah. The minor prophets include Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. They aren't called major and minor because some are more important than others, um, as much as the fact that the major prophets just had more to say than the others. 
If you look, for example, at the books of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, you'll see uh, that none of the other prophets can come close to the volume of work that was cranked out by those three. Um, in addition to prophecy, there are other books that contain parables, in other words, stories, like those that contain Jesus' teachings through various stories and parables. Jesus loved parables because it made uh, what he wanted to teach people a lot easier to understand. In addition to prophecy and parables, um, uh, there are other types. Some of them are historical. Some are legal. And I'm thinking here like uh, Leviticus is one of those. It covers in detail the laws of the day, how the altar is to be constructed, how the temple is to be constructed, what type of materials are to be used, how many, where they're supposed to be put, what type of material is used for the the supports of the walls, what type is supposed to be used for the roof, all of those kinds of things. Not the most interesting reading, unless you happen to be an archaeologist or somebody who uh, has an interest in those, but Leviticus has other information that's important too. But it's a very legalistic writing. I think you get the idea. The main thing is that instead of reading the Bible like a novel or like an encyclopedia of facts, we need to read each part through the lenses of the way the writer intended for it to be read. Now, we'll give you an example. Did Jonah, was Jonah actually swallowed by the whale? Some believe yes. Some believe no. Well, in God's world, I'm sure that if God intended that it would have happened, it would have happened. But there's a more important purpose for this book of Scripture than just whether Jonas was inside the whale or not. And some translations indicate that Jonah was with the whale, not necessarily inside the whale. Um, this was a story that was intended to teach a lesson, not necessarily one that was intended to be read as an entry from the Encyclopedia Britannica, for those of you who are old enough to remember what that is. Some people say, well, the Catholic and Orthodox churches have more books and the Protestant churches have fewer, so they can't even agree what should be in the Bible. Well, let me set the record straight here. All Christian Bible canons, now let me say this again, all Christian Bible canons are built around the same 66 books, all of them. Um, all, uh, there, there was a group of books that had been used over the centuries by Christians that weren't in the same league as those 66, but were still significant Christian literature. They were written by people who were recognized as major players uh, in the development of Christianity. Um, and uh, uh, those books became uh, came to be called the Septuagint. Um, they were pushed back behind the Old Testament and Protestant Bibles, and then were eventually dropped in the Protestant Bibles, but they were kept in the Catholic and Orthodox Bibles. And actually, the books of the Bible, this may come as a surprise to some of you, the books of the Bible didn't actually have chapters and verses until the 1200s common era. In other words, 1,200 years after Christ's birth. We don't have, another thing that some people may not understand is we don't have original, complete copies of the Bible's texts, at least not in a single document. 
We have some text. We have some collection of scrolls. We have a lot of them. We have the Dead Sea Scrolls, which have kind of filled in the blanks and have kind of helped verify some sections of Scripture. Um, but many of those are just fragments of the in original text they came from. Some of those uh, fragments they have from the Dead Sea Scrolls are just little bits of paper with maybe a half a dozen words on them. And unfortunately, some of the people who were the first were the first ones to examine the scrolls did not store them properly. They didn't view them properly. They didn't use gloves with you know acid-free materials and have filtered air and controlled climate. Um, you know, they smoked cigarettes while they were looking at them. They, uh, you know, taught, they didn't wear masks, so they talked around them and their, their uh, uh, saliva spattered on them. Uh, they probably had coffee stains on some of them. I don't know. Um, but uh, they were not as uh, preserved as carefully as they are now. And some of those have been lost over the years. They've become impossible to read. Um, but the bulk of the texts we seem to have today have been faithfully preserved over the years. There are just differences in various manuscripts, but the majority of the content has stayed the same for, the th for thousands of years. There may be slight variations from one version to another, but the basic content of those manuscripts has remained changed, unchanged for thousands of years. The Bible as we know it today is not in chronological order. In other words, the books are not in the order in which they were originally written. That's why it seems if you read the Bible and go from book to book, they seem to jump around time-wise um, because it seems that way because they do. And if you're interested in the original order uh, of those chapters, I'll try and post something on here about it. But it's also possible through ChristianBook.com and some other resources to buy a chronological Bible that actually has the books in the order, uh, organized in the order they were written. So if you're curious about that, or if you'd like to read the Bible in the order that uh, of the books, uh, the way they were originally written, I'd suggest you take a look at one of those. I'm going to close with a few quick facts about the Bible, just to uh, kind of wind things up here. Um, the longest book of the Bible is by the prophet Jeremiah. We mentioned that just a little while ago. The shortest book is 3rd John. It's only a page long, I believe. 2nd John is the second shortest. Surprise, surprise. Evidently, John wasn't a wordy fella. Um, there are about 185 songs in the Bible, and about 150 of those are in the Psalms. I say about because um, uh, there's some disagreement among biblical scholars, uh, even with the Psalms, as to which ones are actually songs and which ones were written more as poetry or something else. Hebrews is one book in the New Testament is uh, is where the author is a complete mystery. Um, different religious leaders have argued uh, for who they thought may have written it, but at the end of the day, no one knows for sure. The word Trinity is never mentioned in the Bible. Although Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are mentioned somewhere around 120 times in Scripture. It's possible that the term Trinity is used so that Christians have a common term that they can use to identify their belief in the three-in-one God. 
I hope you found some of this information helpful and at least interesting today as you uh, do your, what I hope is your regular Bible reading. If you want to get more uh, information on this fascinating book, I'm going to post uh, some uh, websites, including the one I got some of this information from uh, and, uh, and others. Um, uh, that, that one I would just refer to as overviewbible.com slash Bible facts slash. Um, I'll post that one along with the others. But anyway, uh, if you're interested in digging deeper and doing more research, we'll try and give you some links to that. I'll also try and see if I can come up with a list, uh, a chronological list of the book of the Bible, or at least a, a web page you can go to to get those uh, if you're interested in seeing what that might be. So, uh it's important that we take a, a few minutes every now and then to learn more about this book that we call the Bible that is so important to our faith. So I hope you found this helpful. And uh, we thank you for tuning in again. We're going to move on to our final hymn uh, and then on into our closing. But for right now, will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you that uh, your written word has been placed in our hands by many faithful saints over the years who have taken it upon themselves to just uh, keep passing on the stories, the ancient stories, and to those who uh, had the patience to sit down and write them out so that they could be preserved for uh, in perpetuity uh, for posterity. We thank you, Lord, for the direction that you provide through our lives, through the written word and also through your living word, your son, Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.
no God like Jehovah. There is 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 no God like Jehovah. Behold, He comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, He comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call. Well, uh, we hope you found this uh, interesting. Uh, it, I know that based on how much information you already know about the Bible will depend on how informative it was. But, uh, uh, of course, we present these uh, devotions uh, for people of varying degrees of knowledge about the Bible and about Christianity. Uh, we know that some people... Um, uh, have more knowledge than others, but we also want to present some things for people who are new seekers, who are just now trying to find out what is this thing called the Bible? What is, who is Jesus? So uh, we're going to try and, and come up with a mixture of things, uh, and this is one of those. So uh, anyway, thank you again for joining us this evening, and uh, please receive this blessing. May the Lord watch between thee and me while we are absent one from another. Amen. Remember, we love you and God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Until next week, may God's mercies light your path. Good night and God bless.